Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today's video is going to be about shooting video interiors. This is going to be suitable for architectural photographers trying their hand at video for the first time, YouTubers just starting out, or really anybody picking up a camera and wanting to shoot video indoors. Now this video was actually inspired by one of our channel members, Aerial Lens Photo, who quite often writes into the channel and asks questions. And in this particular instance, he asked us, how to best set up your camera and in terms of lighting what we need to use and also what to consider for audio so i'm going to cover all those topics in this video and i'm going to break it down to five different categories and the first one is going to be about the equipment that you need to use now a famous photographer once said the best camera that you have is the one that you have on you and i think in this day and age that there has never been a time where this sentiment is truer because our iPhones can shoot 4K videos, our compact cameras can shoot full HD to 4K, and we have no excuse for quality on just about any piece of technology we might have at our disposal. Having said that, each camera and each format has an advantage and disadvantage. So if we run through a few options for you, uh, we'll take a look at the differences. First of all, there's a compact uh, micro four thirds style of camera, which has become really popular. It's low in price at under $1,000, shoots great photos and full HD videos, and some of them even shoot 4K video. So these, these can be really good choices for the lower budget. Now, there are some limitations and differences compared to some of the more expensive cameras. If you look at the Canon 5D Mark III or IV, for example, or even a 1D, these cameras are full frame cameras. And the difference between this micro four thirds format and the full frame is quite evident, especially in low light scenes. And also we have usually better range of lenses to choose from with the larger DSLR cameras. These are much more expensive though. A good setup with a uh, full frame body and a few lenses could be anywhere from five to $7,000 starting out so you're really going to need to be serious about your video production if you want to get into this realm but it's certainly the way to go now the other choice that is often overlooked in this day of day and age because of um i guess popularity is the camcorder format which i've got here it's a panasonic sort of consumer 4k camcorder comes in at around a thousand dollars or below and it shoots 4k the focusing is amazing and it's a really versatile, easy to use camera that's gonna guarantee great results out of the box. Now, as I said, it's out of fashion at the moment. Most people shoot with uh, DSLRs and compact cameras because they're versatile for, for both photography and video, but there's still some great advantages in using a compact camcorder format. And certainly if you have, have the budget, you can look at a true professional camcorder that might come in at around three to seven thousand dollars as well so there's your options in terms of equipment there's no right or wrong answer it depends on what your budget is and what you're comfortable with now moving on to the second topic it's about the camera settings now no matter which camera you use the settings are all very similar we need to be thinking about the iso the shutter speed and the aperture now there's no golden rules here either but typically I like to shoot with a rather wide open aperture, especially if I'm shooting an interview type scene, I'm able to isolate my subject matter a little and get some background blur, which makes it quite interesting. So I'm shooting with a 5D Mark III in front of me. It's got a 50 millimeter 1.2 L series lens and the aperture is set to around 2.5. So it's not the widest 1.2 aperture because I'm gonna have trouble focusing. At 2.5, it's a good medium point where mostly I'm in focus and the background and some of the foreground elements might be slightly out of focus to add a bit of depth of field. So that's the type of setting I like to use for interviews. If I'm shooting actual interiors, I'll definitely close it down a little to make sure more things stay in focus as I'm moving around. So as you're moving around with the camera, I think going to F8 or F11 would be ideal, in which case you're going to need to consider your lighting quite carefully. We'll talk about that in the next topic, but before we move on, the other thing to talk about is your shutter speed. And again, this being, can be quite varied. If you're shooting a still subject face to camera, you can look at 24 frames per second for a more cinematic type look, 
or 30 frames per second. No need to shoot at 60 frames per second for the faster type shots. Certainly as you pick your camera up, if you're putting it on a gimbal or performing any type of motion, it will be recommended to go to a higher shutter speed of 60 frames per second. And again, that tends to ensure that the motion is slightly more fluid. Now, the next thing that's really important at number three is the lighting. So when you're shooting interiors, you are dealing with incredible amounts of contrast from what's inside and outside. So the foreground will often be quite dim compared to the light coming in from your windows. As a photographer, if you've done any type of still photography in interiors, you might have experienced this in the past and bracketed your shots and taken care of it in post-production, but it's too difficult to do this in most cases for video, so bracketing isn't really an option. There's also HDR photography in stills where your camera can do all the work for you, compile those multiple exposures and put it together in one final shot. There are HDR video modes on some cameras, but not many. This Panasonic has HDR mode, but I find that when I'm dealing with great extremes from the interior and exterior spaces, it still doesn't quite cut it. So there's no way around it when you're shooting interiors, you really need to be considering some kind of lighting. Now for this scene, I've got two fluoro banks in front of me and they're 1500 watts each. So they're pumping out a lot of light. The downside is that Sometimes they're so bright that if you have an inexperienced uh, subject in front of the camera, they find them overwhelming and they can make them blink too much and feel really uncomfortable. I've probably been blinking a little bit more than usual in this video because I don't set them up as high. I don't usually have uh, window scenes behind me. But if uh, blinking is a problem, you need to tone them down a little bit. So you really need a couple of powerful lights to be able to fill in the scene and enable you to then get the exposure on the windows coming in. So that's really how you deal with the lighting. In terms of what I'm exposing for, I'm not exposing for the foreground or the window, it's somewhere in between. So this actual scene before I got it into post-production would have had me slightly underexposed by about one stop in order to get enough detail in those windows. And then I'll bring up the levels in the, uh, in the subject matter slightly with my sliders in Premiere Pro, my video editing software. So that's how I would shoot my interiors in terms of lighting. And this also applies when you're doing some motion shots in any scene. Always make sure you've got some powerful lights with you when you're shooting interiors. They can be these cheap fluoro banks that I've got here. They could be LED lights. They could even be tungsten, any type of light. And if you can get them as daylight balanced, you're gonna get the best results uh, that are gonna be most flattering to your subject. The next thing to look at is the audio. Now, no matter which camera you have, you're not gonna get good audio out of it. So you have to always consider an external audio source. You've got two options really the way I see it. You've got a lapel mic, such as the one that I'm using in this opening scene, or you've got a boom mic. Now the choice that you need to make depends on how far away your camera is from your subject. For this opening scene, my camera is over three meters away from me. So using a boom mic placed on that camera is not going to work well enough because it will pick up too much echo from the room and too much noise because my voice is far away from the source. So in which case I've choose, chosen to use a lapel mic, it's nice and close and it's getting my voice, uh, my voice is overwhelming any noise and echo that the room is producing. So really nine times out of 10, I'm going to be choosing a lapel mic for my audio because it's pretty much a surefire way of getting good audio no matter what your space is. The boom mic is great because it's less obtrusive and easier to set up, but these only really work when you can get your camera really close to your subject and when you don't have echoey spaces with large ceilings, for example. The final thing to consider is your tripod, which keeps things still and then stabilizers and sliders, etc., for adding motion to your video. Now for this opening scene, I've got a static tripod with a photographer's head, so it doesn't need to perform any motion, so any tripod will do. But when it comes to doing panning shots of interiors, I'll choose a, a tripod with a fluid head, such as the one that I have here. So you can do really nice panning shots left and right and up and down. Another thing that's going to add impact to your video is the use of sliders. I tend to use this small slider here to create motion, again, left and right or backwards and forwards. And sliders have a more cinematic look 
than using a fluid head because they tend to bring the subject matter foreground and background in and out like you would see in a cinematic shot. Another thing to consider is using a gimbal, which is going to add even more dynamics to your shot. You can do real estate walkthroughs and you can even do selfie type videos where you wanna walk around and show the environment you're in. So these are highly recommended to add dynamics and more interest to your videos. So hopefully you found these five tips useful. If you did, be sure to hit me up with a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. Also keep those comments coming in. You never know when the next comment leads to a video just like this. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye for now.